Legend of Exorcism Chapter 101 Tenli of the Heavenly River On the main street of Luyang, at twilight, the medicine hall was nearing closing time, and there was only a single doctor left to man the place in case of any emergencies. Hung Jun carefully studied that patient, only to find that his body had already begun to rot slowly, and the energy in his meridians was very weak. He can't be cured, that doctor said. Young man, he liked to wander the streets of flowers and alleys of willows, and every man's fate is his own to bear. Go home sooner ba. What illness is this? Hung Jun had never seen this kind of illness before. Don't touch him, the doctor ordered after seeing that Hung Jun's method of taking the man's pulse looked like he had also come from a physician family. After the skin splits and bleeds, scars will be left over the body. If you touch them too much, you'll catch this illness, too. You're clean and untouched now, don't get yourself covered in lesions. Hung Jun glanced at that doctor and thought for a bit, before entering the medicine hall to get some supplies. After coming back out, he lifted that person up and said, Let's go, I'll treat you. Doctor, I'm bringing him back to try. Don't try. The doctor wanted to persuade him further, but Hung Jun had already taken the person and left. This action was basically equivalent to challenging the doctor, but for one, Hung Jun had good looks, and for two, his actions didn't seem to be directed against him, so the doctor let it be. But when he got halfway home, Hung Jun was reminded, what would he do if Li Jinglong gave him the cold shoulder? Though this person had brought such a venereal disease upon himself, that wasn't a crime worthy of death. However, Li Jinglong would definitely scold him. No matter how Hung Jun thought about it, he was still conflicted. If Li Jinglong told him not to bring the person inside, what would he do then? No matter what, he couldn't leave him lying outside. The two of them might even argue over this. Thank you, thank you. That person dragged his heavy feet along as he walked forward. Hung Jun gritted his teeth and led him towards the Luyang exorcism department. He had already thought of how he would ask for Li Jinglong to show mercy. But what he saw was that Li Jinglong was pacing outside the exorcism department, waiting for him to return. After spotting him from afar and seeing that Hung Jun was carrying a person, he was greatly frightened, and he asked, What's wrong? Li Jinglong swiftly strode forward, supporting that person inside. He said to Hung Jun, I was wondering why you were taking so long in returning. Hung Jun dithered as he told Li Jinglong what had happened. What he hadn't expected was that Li Jinglong didn't have any complaints at all. Instead, he asked, take off his clothes and let me see. They're dirty, Hung Jun said. Don't touch. Li Jinglong replied, it's you who shouldn't touch. Come, let's wipe him down. Hung Jun found this very unexpected. Li Jinglong hadn't scolded him, and was instead wiping this person down. The skin across that person's body was rotting, and at the slightest touch of the towel, he began to shout loudly from the pain. It's almost all rotted away, Li Jinglong said. What's going on? Even if it was an illness that he caught in the streets of flowers and alleys of willow, it wouldn't be this intense. Hung Jun appraised Li Jinglong, asking, You've seen it before. Before, amongst the brothers of the Xinyu army, there were some without money, Li Jinglong said, so they got together with the dancing girls in the Hu caravans. They also caught a bunch of diseases, so naturally I've seen it before. What is your name? Wen. Wen Ben, that man moaned. I'm so itchy. Stop scratching. Hung Jun stopped him from scratching his own body, before going to make some medicinal paste that would stop the itching. Li Jinglong untied that man's pants and peeked in, saying, This part's good, however, so it doesn't seem like it. What does it look like? Hung Jun asked. It seems more like he's been poisoned, Li Jinglong murmured. I also think so, Hung Jun said. Take his pulse, it's very weak. His body's rotting, but it doesn't have a stench to it, 
but rather some odd scent. When Li Jinglong had been a soldier, he had learned a bit about how to treat fight-inflicted wounds, internal injuries, and other such conditions. Though he was not as well versed as Hung Jun, he could also grasp the general gist, and after thinking for a moment, he asked Wen Bin, who were you on familiar terms with? I... I don't remember, there were too many girls. Wen Bin and Li Jinglong were of similar heights, and now he was stripped bare and laid out on the bed. Setting aside the scabs and broken skin that covered his body, his physique was very good. His shoulders were broad, his waist sturdy, and in terms of handsomeness, he seemed to even win out a little against Li Jinglong. All he lacked was the heroic air about him, but it was obvious that he didn't lack for pretty girls on a usual basis, and was even someone that women would be willing to pay money to provide for. Tell me clearly, Li Jinglong said. This is to save your life. Wen Bin's body was so itchy that he kept groaning. That pain felt as if there were ants crawling about in his marrow, and he said, in the Tenli of the Heavenly River, seven days ago, the one I saw was Xiang Yu. Xiang Yu. Hung Jun asked curiously. Upon seeing Hung Jun come over with the pace that he had concocted, Wen Bin changed to pleading incessantly. Quick, give that to me, give me the medicine. Li Jinglong's mouth twitched at those broken pleas, while Hung Jun's expression was one of exasperation, if only because those pleas and the moans were very similar to the cries of give it to me that Hung Jun uttered in bed. I'll go to the Tenli of the Heavenly River to take a look, Li Jinglong said. How could Hung Jun let Li Jinglong go on his own? He applied the medicine and followed after him swiftly. Li Jinglong chuckled at that. Are you afraid that I won't be able to hold back? It's not like I'm. I'm so curious though. Hung Jun raised a hand and pulled Li Jinglong over, slinging an arm over his shoulders as he walked out with him in all seriousness. Li Jinglong first went to ask for directions to the Tenli of the Heavenly River, and they all told him to head towards the back of the Tianjin Bridge, and when they saw people clustered around a hole, they should go in. Hung Jun's brain was filled with a fog of confusion at that. But when the two of them arrived at the end of the Tianjin Bridge, they saw that there were quite a few people waiting outside a hole in the wall. That hole also looked very normal and unassuming, but there was a plaque hanging outside of it, which read Tenli of the Heavenly River. Li Jinglong. Hung Jun. Why did this place seem like a mausoleum? Hung Jun was just about to stick his head in for a peek, when quite a few flirts hanging about said, Hey yo, come, come, I won't be shopping around today, what's your name? Handsome young lad? Let's go drink some wine. Li Jinglong's face immediately darkened. Hung Jun was afraid that he was going to beat them up, so he said quietly, Investigating the case, investigating the case is more important. With that, he didn't bother taking a closer look before dragging Li Jinglong in. The inside of the cavern was pitch black, but from afar came the sound of music and unrestrained laughter. Li Jinglong was also very surprised, all of the brothels in Luoyang were actually underground. It was said that when Wu Zhao was in power, she had greatly detested this line of work, and it was because of this that she had purged it from Luoyang. With that, Many people moved from above the ground to below it. Because the Tenli of the Heavenly River was located in a section of the Grand Canal that the previous Emperor, Emperor Yang, had ordered opened up, the underground canal was vast and ventilated. In the end, it wasn't put into use, and Emperor Yang was later strangled to death, leaving behind this unused canal. After walking for a short stretch more, the area in front of them grew brighter. Hung Jun let out a wah, and just like every youth that entered this place, he was almost so shaken that he couldn't keep his eyes open. The Tenli of the Heavenly River was a long underground street, and wooden buildings were built on both sides of it. The entire place shone with red lamps and golden light, like a dream. This place was untouched by the sun, and the lamps were constantly lit regardless if it was day or night. Many people were gathered on both sides of the street, drinking, flirting, sitting in stalls watching people dance, it was just like a market. 
The only thing was, it was a grand market of horse. There was a forest of stalls that reached from the entrance all the way to the end of the Tenley of the Heavenly River. With that level of splendor, in terms of guests alone, more than 10,000 of them had flooded in. The small towers built in the style of the central plain stood to the left, while to the right were the tents of the Hu people. There were even thick, wide rugs from the western regions laid out on the ground, piled full of pillows, and Han people pressed down on Hu dancers as they went at it with each other right on the rugs. Hung Jun had never seen such a sensational scene before, and he reeled, thinking that thankfully he hadn't let Li Jinglong come on his own. Usually, even the nightingale of the spring dawn that Li Jinglong went to was still an elegant place, when had he ever stumbled directly into such a primal, money-squandering place? Oh! Handsome young lad! Quite a few who dancers spotted Hung Jun and immediately came rushing over. Hung Jun swiftly ducked behind Li Jinglong, a little afraid. Li Jinglong's expression changed, and he managed to summon up a look of pleased elegance as he asked a Hu dancer, is young lady Xiang Yu here? Unexpectedly, the group of women simply rolled their eyes at him and dispersed. Li Jinglong said, what? Is there something inappropriate about her? Are you mad? A Hu dancer asked. With so many ladies, who knows which one Xiang Yu is? Hung Jun laughed loudly. They could only let that be, but Hung Jun hadn't expected that there would be times when Li Jinglong would get reprimanded as well. Li Jinglong had no choice but to lead Hung Jun along the street instead. Look, they're all picking and choosing, Li Jinglong said to Hung Jun. Pay attention to your gaze, don't be too curious. Just pretend like you're strolling down the street. Hung Jun managed a nod. Sure. The two of them did their best not to seem like outsiders, but when they passed by a plump Hu merchant's stall, that Hu merchant suddenly let out a hay, which greatly startled Hung Jun. The Hu merchant burst out into loud laughter, the fat all over his body jiggling along. There were several Hu dancers by his side, decked out in thick makeup and bright colors, with bells hanging from their ankles. They came over with quick steps, reaching out their hands to pull at Li Jinglong and Hung Jun. Li Jinglong hurried to wave his hands, and he grabbed that woman's wrist in a fluster, finally managing to break free. As they kept heading forward, Hung Jun couldn't help studying the Han people on the left side of the path. Suddenly, someone whistled to him from the side, but when he turned to look, he saw that it was a tall, lanky Hu man, his chest bare and his face tinged red. He reminded Hung Jun of Mo Rijin. That Hu man waved towards him, gesturing for him to come over. Li Jinglong was off to one side asking for news, so Hung Jun went over and said to that Hu person, I'm searching for someone. The Hu man brought Hung Jun into a tent, asking, You're a Han person. Hung Jun nodded, and that man said, I'm a Shai Wei person. Hung Jun thought to himself, No wonder, but just as he was about to ask, that man said, I noticed you a while ago. Who was the person with you? Hung Jun replied, My husband. Yo, should we call him over and do it together? The Hu man undid the drawstring of pants, and his loose white pants fell to the ground. He continued, Feel free to give me as much money as you want, Gig will play with you until you've had your fill. And after saying this, he reached a hand out to hug him, lowering his head to kiss him. Li Jinglong was currently making his inquiries right outside the front of that Hu person's tent, and Hung Jun let out a loud shout as he raced out. Li Jinglong thought that something had happened, only to see a Shai Wei man follow him out of the tent, his thing erect. I won't hurt you, the Shai Wei man said, smiling. He then used his finger to flick his crotch, meaning, you see? Did he touch you? Li Jinglong asked. Hung Jun hurried to reply. He didn't, I misunderstood. The Shai Wei man asked, you two came together. So small, and yet you've come out to take customers, Li Jinglong said to that Shai Wei man. Never mind, I'm afraid of hurting you if I tried anything. The man. Hung Jun laughed so hard that he tripped, 
and he hurriedly dragged Li Jinglong with him and ran away. Walk towards the very end, Li Jinglong said. There's a wine shop in the middle there that is up to date on the recent news. Let's go there and find someone to ask. Hung Jun was just about to cross the main street when there was another whistle. That came from a Simu youth whose entire body was coated with oil. He stood there naked, with a ring around his thing, and he asked, Want to come here? Hung Jun could only pretend that he hadn't heard it, thinking, Why are you all asking for me, go find Li Jinglong instead. No, Li Jinglong said, pitching his voice higher. We're members of the eunuch faction, we can't come. The youth. Hung Jun felt that the nonsense Li Jinglong was spewing was hilarious. Just as they passed the intersection, others whistled towards them, one after the other, all teasing him, making him feel too abashed to even look at them. Handsome young masters, another youth called to them. Come over and have a seat. Li Jinglong pulled Hung Jun to his other side, before smiling elegantly at him, not replying. Hung Jun had just turned around when someone whistled at him. That was a Tokarian man, and he spoke an elegant sentence of Persian at him. That poem was one that Hung Jun had heard A Tai sing before, it was written by a married woman in her boudoir, and the meaning was, Beautiful youth, can you come to my window? Li Jinglong hurriedly pulled Hung Jun back to the other side. After passing by this male who prostitute section, there were finally fewer whistles directed at them. There were only who prostitutes leaning against their tents, and when they saw people passing by, they shook their wrists gently, jangling the bells there. The Han sections were filled with young women wearing elaborate robes, holding round fans as they languidly watched the street. Why are they all so interested in you? Li Jinglong asked. Hung Jun began to chuckle. His face was a little red as he pointed out, that's right, none of them seem to be very interested in you. Li Jinglong didn't reply verbally, instead shooting Hung Jun a look. A moment later, he asked, do you think? But it was just at this moment that Li Jinglong's forehead furrowed, as if he was thinking. Hung Jun raised his eyebrows slightly, asking, what did you find? That fragrance, Li Jinglong said. Hung Jun smelled it too, there was definitely a trace of that light fragrance on Wen Bin's body. It had simply been overpowered by the Hu people's strong fragrances before, but when they arrived in the dead center of the Tenli of the Heavenly River, it gradually grew distinguishable. Let me go take a look, Li Jinglong said. Wait here for a bit. In the center of the main street were food and wine shops, as well as simple goods shops and aphrodisiac shops. There was no one here trying to lure in customers, so while Li Jinglong went to a food shop to ask, Hung Jun sniffed, trying to figure out where that light fragrance was coming from. There was another whistle, and when Hung Jun turned to look, there was a man standing on the second floor, wrapped in a bathrobe, his chest bare and a sword adorning his waist. Hung Jun was a little nervous as he saw that man set one foot on the railing, studying him in a drunken manner. You came on your own, that man asked Hung Jun. Hung Jun didn't reply. He backed up a little, raising his head to look at him. You look so pretty, the man murmured, a hint of tenderness in his eyes. Do you drink wine? Little brother, come up here and have a drink. That man was clearly a practitioner of martial arts, and his physique was a little like Lu Su's in that his chest and abdomen were both very slim. It was only that his entire body was one size larger than Lu Su's. He held a jug of wine in his right hand, which he shook at Hung Jun and handed to him, gesturing for him to come drink. Since the man had called him little brother, Hung Jun felt that he was probably not someone who was luring in guests. Plus, he had a sword around his waist, so he seemed like someone of the Jianghu. With that, Hung Jun happily climbed up the stairs. Do you have money, that man asked Hung Jun. Help me pay my tab. It was only with that that Hung Jun learned that this man was out of money, so Hung Jun pulled out some silver and had the waiter bring some wine up first. The man's stubble had not been trimmed, and he actually seemed to be somewhat destitute. After the wine came, 
he said a brief thanks, and it wasn't clear if that was addressed to Hung Jun or to the waiter. After taking two sips, he then asked, why aren't you going to fool around? We've come to search for someone, Hung Jun replied. What is your name? My name, that drunken man said, smiling, if I were to say it, I'd frighten you out of your wits. Hung Jun laughed at that, and he replied, why don't you try me? But as that man spoke, he couldn't stay upright, so he toppled over onto the table. He asked, who are you searching for? In the heavenly river that stretches ten li, thousands of stars fill the sky, can you tell which one is which? A girl called Xiang Yu, Hung Jun asked. Have you seen her? Xiang Yu ah, that man said. I've seen her, but I haven't slept with her. Buy me some more wine, thanks. Upon seeing him drink so quickly, Hung Jun said, since you're drinking so fast, your bladder's about to explode huh? You're right, hand me the chamber pot, the man replied. Hung Jun. That man was actually only wearing a black-blue bathrobe, and he sat cross-legged. Now all he had to do to pee was pull aside the hem of his robe and lift the chamber pot. In Chang'an, Hung Jun had seen many people that had gotten so drunk that they weren't aware of their surroundings, and even people who had run along the street shouting loudly, so he didn't find this strange. Instead, he asked, where's Yang Yu? That way, the man pointed towards the west. I remembered wrong, it should be that way. Hung Jun offered, I'll buy you two more jugs of wine, so lead me over there. The man replied, deal. With that, Hung Jun and that man went down the stairs, waiting outside the wine shop for Li Jing Long to come. The man was currently drunk, and he had one arm draped around Hung Jun's shoulders, the weight of his body resting on Hung Jun. The way he was leaning was very intimate, yet it was not obscene. Hung Jun, however, was not afraid of Li Jing Long growing jealous, because the brothers of the exorcism department often draped their arms around each other's shoulders like this usually. As long as there was no other intent, this was fine. Li Jinglong came back after asking around, and upon seeing that man, he immediately said, Hey! Let go of him! Who are you? The man's hair was loose and unbound, and when he raised his head, his eyes were filled with confusion, even as he tried to figure out who Li Jinglong was. Li Jinglong, however, froze first, and he asked, Tebe Xiong. The man ended and pressed down on Hung Jun's shoulder, pushing him to Li Jinglong as he said, You are Little Long? And, you two know each other? What a surprise! Hung Jun. Hung Jun looked at that man, and Li Jinglong's voice grew very distant. It seemed to say, Let me introduce you, this is Li Bai. Hung Jun's world immediately collapsed around him. End chapter. Legend of Exorcism Chapter 102 A Bloodthirsty Gambling House When night fell, a kuang from a golden gong rang out across the Angzi military manor. The musical instruments all sounded at once as all the lithe soldiers took up their spots around the arena. Those that were striking the Bianzhong struck their Bianzhong and those that played the Qing played their Qing. The music resounded in a hubbub, and the hall burst with noise. And Lushan was eating meat and drinking wine, spilling that wine all over his seat. A small eunuch hurriedly wiped him down, but his warriors were crude men who had followed him for a long time now, and they kept jeering at the eunuch. In the middle of the arena, two warriors were each holding a long polyrm as they began to dance to that music. Morijin and Lusu were on either side of An Lushan, each of them kneeling with one knee to the ground, offering up a large golden platter. When the dishes were served, the servants placed the cooked meats, fruit and vegetables, roasted chicken and the like, into the platters. From time to time, an Lushan would point with a finger, and that little eunuch would bring it over to him and offer it up. He would either feed it to an Lushan, or let him feed himself. Morijin and Lusu both took this chance to study an Lushan. 
The only way to describe his physique would be to describe him as a mountain, and his body was adorned with all kinds of accessories. The golden ring that had hung around his neck the day that he had entered the city had disappeared, and in its place was a necklace of peacock green gemstones. Large luminous night pearls dangled from his ears, and a belt of white jade was wrapped around his waist. There were some forty-plus commanders who were present in the hall to attend the banquet, as well as a good number of great Tang military officers, who in Lushan had invited. Hu Shen was actually amongst that number as well. The people gathered there chatted cheerfully about trivial matters, while An Lushan watched the warriors fighting in the middle of the hall. Upon seeing one struck down to the ground by the other, he let loose loud laughter. With his eyes, Mo Rijin indicated for Lu Su to look into the hall. When Lu Su looked, he saw that the fight between the two warriors was growing more and more intense. The music to the side had already stopped, and what replaced it was the beating of drums. The movements of those fighters grew faster and faster, and when one of them started flagging, and Lushin let out an angered shout. Kill him. The stronger fighter rushed forward, stabbing the polyrm into the weaker one's abdomen. It pierced through his strong abdominal muscles and came out the back. Blood flowed out from the weaker one's mouth as he collapsed to the ground. The Angzi Manor was like this every night, but this was the first time that Hu Sheng had come. Upon seeing this, his face immediately lost color, and he almost started shouting loudly. The warriors shouted wildly, and after that stronger fighter left his polyrm pinned through the weaker fighter's abdomen, he turned and knelt in front of An Lushan with one knee to the ground, cupping his hands in a salute. But just as An Lushan was about to rise and award him, his expression suddenly changed. The loser of the fight who had been skewered by that polyrm suddenly pulled out a long sword from the side of his leg, and with all his might, he flung it at the victor whose back was to him. Everyone in the hall let out loud shouts at the same time. Lu Su almost couldn't hold the platter steady as a human head rolled down, landing at the foot of the stairs. And Lushan, however, roared, good. Reward him, reward him. But after the loser got his revenge, his innards had already been pierced through, and he wouldn't live for much longer. Fresh blood sprayed out from the stump of the victim's neck, splattering all over the ground. Immediately, servants went forth and dragged the body away, using the rug to soak up all the fresh blood on the ground. The entire hall was filled with the tang of blood. Send in the panther and Lushan said. The commanders all shouted, yes. With that, the golden platters in Morijin and Lu Su's hands were taken away, only to be replaced by two platters of white jade, on which were placed chunks of high-quality raw lamb meat. It was only with that that Lu Su understood what offering up meat meant. Soon after, a cage was pulled into the hall, and inside the cage was a hunting panther whose fur was completely black. There was another wa from within the hall. Hu Sheng asked, what is this for now? And Lushan laughed a few times, saying, Hu Shen, make sure you watch carefully. Lu Su studied that hunting panther, before looking to Mo Rijin. Mo Rijin hesitated for a moment, before he narrowed his eyes and shook his head slightly. As soon as the black panther smelled the blood in the air, it focused in on An Lushan and let out a low roar. Several beast masters came in at that, holding long sticks with spikes as they corralled that black panther into the center. The servants had set up wire nets beforehand, connected with metal threads. The nets reached to the eaves, and they were fastened tightly there. There was a gap left that was just enough to allow one person to pass through. A bell rang, and four youths came to the front of the hall, all of them wearing the same kind of silk white trousers. Their skin was snow white, and their upper bodies were bared. On their backs were written kitten inscriptions in cinnabar as a way to identify them. They had bells tied to their ankles, and as soon as they saw that black panther, their faces lost all color. Lusu. Morijin. Lusu glanced at Morijin, but Morijin shook his head very gently again. And Lushan asked, Who are you all betting on? Come, come. It's time to place the bets. 
It was at this time that the housekeeper held up four plates, each signifying one of the youths. Lu Su watched, his scalp numb, Mo Rajin had heard before in his tribe that An Lushan had an obsession with beautiful young men, but he hadn't thought that he would be so brazen as to have such a disregard for human life in the middle of Chang'an. In the hall, the officials of the Great Tang placed their bets with expressions of horror. And Lushan said, I'm betting on the third one. That youth hurried to get on his knees and kneel in front of Enlushan, a sob in his voice. Right after, the four youths were all sent in. As soon as the Beast Master's spiked pikes were removed, the Black Panther immediately came leaping forward. The youths fled frantically, each of them shouting with terror. Some of them had their knees give out under them from fright, and Lu Su grew anxious, but just as he was about to speak, the screams rang out in twos and threes. The Black Panther's body was pitch black, while the youths were snow white. The sight of their fresh blood gushing out when they were bitten to death was truly shocking, and the Great Tang officials present all felt nauseous at that and couldn't help but vomit up the contents of their stomachs. And Lushan's bunch, however, was very excited by this, and they let out a series of loud shouts. That Black Panther had already bitten two people to death and were ignoring the others, but just as it was about to enjoy the corpses, the Beast Masters struck it with that studded pike, and it let out an infuriated roar. And Lushan suddenly sat up, and the hall shook at that. He got up from his seat, picked up the meat on the platter Lusu was holding, and tossed it into the cage. The Black Panther immediately leapt on it and began to devour the lamb meat. With that, the Beast Masters and the servants worked together, dragging the dead people out. Morijin looked up to see Enlushan's back, only to see that around the back of Enlushan's plump, fleshy waist, the waistband of his pants hung loose, revealing the edge of a red-colored gemstone. It seemed to be set in the flesh in the middle of his back, near his buttocks. Morijin glanced meaningfully at Lusu, but Lusu was already furious beyond belief as he watched the cage. There were only two youths left in the cage, and they wanted nothing more than to take this opportunity to escape. The mouth of the cage, however, was sealed shut, and another round of that bloody slaughter began. Soon after, the pain screams vanished as the Black Panther killed another person. The hall was dead silent. And Lushan had lost, and his expression darkened at that. However, he didn't order for the cage to be opened, and finally, that youth pleaded, Lord, let me out, let me out. Just as Enlushan was about to speak, the Black Panther suddenly leapt on that last youth. Lu Su closed his eyes tightly, and one last pain scream came to his ears. With that came the sound of Enlushan's unrestrained laughter, and he said, split the pot. With that, the housekeeper personally brought the winnings to each of the participants' tables. Morijin gestured again and again for Lu Su to look at Enlushan's back, but Enlushan turned around once more, pulling his pants up and tightening his waistband. When he passed by the steps, he glanced offhandedly at Lu Su. You, Enlushan said. Where are you from? The hall fell silent. Lu Su raised his head and replied, I'm from Liangzhou. Morijin's eyes immediately went wide. Enlushan ordered, get in there. Lu Su knew from the very start, when he revealed an expression of disgust, and Lushan would have definitely noticed him. He put down the golden platter at that, and under Morijin's shocked gaze, he undid the leather straps around his body, holding them in his hands. He went in wearing nothing more than a war skirt, his feet bare. And Lushan studied Lu Su, a depraved smile growing across his face. If you can survive for as long as it takes the marching drums to play one round, come to my rooms tonight. The commanders all laughed loudly at that. Hu Sheng and the rest of the martial officials had never seen Lu Su before. Lu Su's upper body was bare, but his build was not as slender as the youth's before. He walked slowly towards the Black Panther. Mo Rajin lowered his head and chanted an incantation silently, and one of the seven nailed arrows slowly floated in from outside the window. It rose up high, hovering in the air, the point of that arrow pointing right at that black panther. 
Lu Su turned back and glanced at Mo Rijin. Mo Rijin nodded, so slightly that no one else would notice, and Lu Su then bent over and entered the cage. The Black Panther was currently enraged, as it was unable to eat its meat, and upon seeing another person come in, it immediately retreated slightly, studying Lu Su. Lu Su was not at all afraid, and he stood in front of the Black Panther, meeting its gaze. In front of that gaze, the Black Panther actually seemed to be a little afraid. My dear generals! And Lushin proclaimed. Who will you bet on? The crowd in the hall fell into discussion, as they all found this very unexpected. And Lushin chuckled coldly. I'm betting on Haishin, Rise. Several large drums beat wildly in unison, and the Black Panther arched its body at the same time that Lu Su hunched forward. Mo Rijin's nervousness rose to its peak. Sweat dripped down his brow, landing on the ground. In that instant, the Black Panther turned into an arrow leaving the bow, shooting with a shua towards Lu Su. Lu Su turned in a full revolution, his bare feet stepping on the metal wire as he spun in the air so his head was down and his feet up. He did a flip in midair, dodging that Black Panther. The man and the panther exchanged spots in a single moment, and immediately the hall was filled with shouts of excitement. Mo Rijin relaxed a tiny bit, knowing that that Black Panther's speed could not beat Lu Su's. At the same time, he didn't dare to let his guard down entirely. In the next moment, the Black Panther let out an angered roar and swiped out at Lu Su. Lu Su, his expression unchanging, ducked away from the blow. That movement landed him in front of the Black Panther's abdomen, and he lifted its front paw, going directly for an over-the-shoulder throw. Instantly, the entire hall fell deathly silent. Even the men beating the drums forgot to bring the sticks down. In that profound silence, that Black Panther was flipped entirely over, and it fell towards the wire netting. Dong. 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 It was only now that the drums beat again. Right after, Lu Su spread his arms, leaping into the air, racing up the wire netting towards the roof of the cage. Mo Rijin looked up. The Black Panther came rushing up after him, but Lu Su hooked the leather straps around the top of the wire net, and he went swinging through the air. The drums were nearing the end of their rhythm as the Black Panther rushed up high, its claws hooking onto the tip of the wire net. Lu Su somersault again, passing between the Black Panther's two paws, before turning and kicking that Black Panther, shouting, Go die, you! The Black Panther let out an angered roar as its abdomen was subject to that kick. Right after, Lu Su wrapped the leather straps around the panther's neck, and with a vicious tug, he hooked the straps onto the wire netting. He leapt down, grabbing the entire Black Panther from behind, both of them plummeting swiftly down. The leather straps immediately tightened, and in that instant, they wrapped themselves firmly around that Black Panther's neck. The Black Panther's roar got cut off in its throat, and its four claws scrabbled wildly through the air as it dangled in midair. Lu Su landed on the ground. He stood in the cage, studying his surroundings. And Lushin and Lu Su's gazes met. You've lost, Lu Su said coldly. The entire hall was hushed, and the only noise came from the muffled sounds coming from the Black Panther's throat as its air was cut off and the light slowly began to vanish from its eyes. Lu Su silently recited an incantation to help its soul find release, and it pressed one hand against that Black Panther's flank, thinking, if I hadn't killed you, then tomorrow night, more people would probably die because of Enlushin, so may your soul return to the cycles of reincarnation. That night, Mo Rijin and Lu Su were taken to Enlushin's bedroom, with the housekeeper waiting on them to one side. That quartermaster was so shaken that his soul was coming out of his mouth, and he explained, Milord, the two of them are brothers, the ones in charge of carrying the platters didn't come today. The inventory manager explained what had happened. Someone knocked from outside, and Enlushin said, Wait there. After the inventory manager finished explaining the entire series of events, Enlushin asked Lu Su, Is what he said true? Lu Su nodded, and Mo Rijin added, Milord, 
my younger brother has a gift. He's always been able to run fast ever since he was young. And Lushin waved his hand irritatedly, meaning, I didn't ask you. He said to the quartermaster and the housekeeper, both of you, leave us. After the two of them left, and Lushin beckoned to Lusu, saying, come, come over here. Lusu slowly walked towards and Lushin. Morijin lowered his head, his lips moving slightly, and the seven nailed arrows came flying over from all directions. They hovered in this dark night, surrounding and Lushin's bedroom. And Lushin reached out a palm as broad as that of a divinity's, grabbing Lusu in one go and pulling him into his arms. Lusu struggled mightily, shouting, Gee! And Lushin did his best to soothe Lusu, constantly licking his face as he said, You're from Liangzhou? Then are your parents still around? Have your brother go back and tell your parents. Lusu shouted, No. My lord, let me go. Lusu wanted to push in Lushin aside, but in Lushin's grip was like steel monocles, once they locked onto him, they would never let go. Finally, Lusu could bear it no longer, and he roared, enraged, let go of me. And Lushin grew enraged, and he also roared, now you're just asking for punishment. Morijin hurried forward and tugged Lusu, making him kneel. And Lushin rose, walking towards Morijin and Lusu. As he did so, he revealed his back to them. That vast body loomed menacingly over them like a mountain, and Morijin pleaded, My lord, spare us, my younger brother is simply ignorant. And Lushin drew in a breath, but right as he was about to explode with rage. A light flashed through Morijin's eyes, and he tugged at Lusu with his left hand, both of them leaping into the air and flying backwards. Right after, Morijin let out a whistle. With a shua, the seven nailed arrows pierced through the walls, windows, and door, all of them speeding towards Enlushin's back at the same time. Enlushin instantly turned, but Morijin raised his hand and struck with his palm, going right for his waist. In the next moment, black flames came bursting out, sending the two of them flying. The seven nailed arrows spun through the air like meteors, all of them chasing and Lushin as he went. From the back of his waist all the way up to his nape, and Lushin's entire back burst with blazing red flames, and two huge hands reached out of the blaze, catching all of those arrows. The bright flames on his back kept crackling and popping as they burned, and black energy burst forth from his eyes. Upon seeing that the situation was not good, Lusu immediately pulled a longsword off the wall, stabbing it towards Enlushin. Exorcists in Lushin's voice had changed, turning into a roar even more horrifying than that of the black dragon. It was like the voice of that heart demon they had seen that night in Dunhuang, and black energy burst forth, filling the entire room. Morijin shouted, Lusu! Run! The two of them rushed right out the doors of the room, coming into the courtyard, only for black shadows to suddenly disperse, turning into whirlwinds that came towards the two of them. Lusu and Morijin leapt into the air. With a somersault, Morijin turned into the grey wolf, but the black whirlwinds had already scattered into goo worms that spread themselves all across the grey wolf's wolf fur. Morijin! Lusu shouted. Go! The grey wolf immediately sank into that black sea of goo worms. And Lushin came racing out, two huge arms growing out of his back. Very quickly, the huge arms swelled up, the hands grasping at Lusu. Lusu leapt onto the wall and flipped into the air. He hesitated, wanting to rescue Morijin, but those devil arms of Enlushin were already swooping viciously towards him. But in this moment, the grey wolf leapt forward, biting down on the devil arms. Flames burst forth, and the grey wolf was sent flying. Lusu finally steeled his heart and took the form of the white deer in midair, leaping into the sky, racing into the depths of the night. And Lushin's hands were wrapped around the grey wolf's throat, and the grey wolf spasmed, countless goo worms coming out of its fur. And Lushin then tossed it heavily on the ground, where the grey wolf kept twitching and whimpering. The goo worms rose up in a dense mass from the ground, gathering into the bodies of those two goo now. 
We were just about to notify you, one of the Gu now said, that we ran into exorcists outside, and we were afraid that they might take action tonight. And Lushan let out a cold grunt and put away those two flaming devil arms, which folded back into his back that had cracked open. He said in a dark voice, bring it down and make sure you take good care of it. Tomorrow, I will personally come to interrogate it. On top of a roof, Lu Su turned back into a human, panting. The black flames gathered up in front of him. Lu Su startled at that, and he watched as they gathered into the form of a man, only to find that that was Yang Kuo's Hong. Xia Yu. Lu Su asked. I was originally thinking of saving you too, Yang Kuo's Hong said darkly. What plan does Li Jinglong have in mind exactly? He could not have let you two go like this to seek your deaths. Lu Su studied Yang Kuo's Hong warily, but did not reply. Yang Kuo's Hong then asked, Where did Li Jinglong go? Lu Su breathed in deeply, clutching one of Mo Rijin's nailed arrows to his chest. Yang Kuo's Hong said, do you want to get revenge for your parents? But even if you were to strike now, you would not be able to kill me. Don't be nervous, a voice said by Lu Su's ear. That was actually Chiu Yangxi's voice, and it said quietly, all you need to do is ask him where he hid Yeming's corpse, and he'll leave right away. Where did you hide Yeming's corpse? Lu Su asked coldly. Yang Kuo's Hong was immediately shaken, and upon hearing these words, he couldn't help taking a half step backwards. His voice trembled as he asked, Who told you? Naturally, someone will come to take care of you, Lu Su said coldly, before he then walked towards the edge of the roof, sliding down, vanishing in the narrow alley. Yang Kuo's Hong had not yet come back to himself fully, and he gasped for breath, his eyes filled with hatred. End chapter